Welcome to the February 8th Beehive Production User Call. We have Andrew Toasterson, Rod, Jan, Dan, and myself, Michael, and we have been bantering about the uh, minimum viable GUI for something like Beehive. So we brought up topics like Proxmox and Friends, and I have on screen a list from about two meetings back, and I just heard of a new bullet point to add to that. Rodney, what was that bullet point? You need to be able to at least look at the console. So when a junior admin's going, he's given, hey, this VM screwed up. He can at least go look at it and see if whatever's running in it is spitting messages all over his console or is obviously sitting at a panic message or something like that. Just basic, fundamental read. It can even be read only console to access just so they can look at it. To Amen. Notice it. That's it. I had that problem with several places I've hosted with with a VM that had locked up or crashed and called them up and like their admin had no way to look at the consult of it. I was like, what? No, I have to escalate that to get somebody that has that kind of access. I'm just like, you're going to be kidding me. Yeah. My question is for the minimum viable deployment, unless you're totally focused on running Windows. Is there really a Unix distribution which cannot be trivially deployed to use a serial port as system console for the kernel lock, the bootloader, and emergency login? Which distribution of Linux is that broken? Because none of the BSDs are. I don't know that any of the Linux distributions are broken for that, but the simplicity with which it is to configure them for that is varied. Yeah, for example, for Debian, you have to change like three or five lines distributed over three files. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you want to get boot stuff, you got to learn to screw with systemd, grub. No, not really. Lilo. Grub. And that's it. No, you have to realize that a majority of newer distributions are now using this thing called system D boot. Okay. Yes. In that case, if you count that, I assumed you meant writing unit files and so on for getting the TDY to work or stuff like that. Because well, you, yeah, you if you want console D messages from a system D booted thing, you have to learn to go screw with system D boot config files. It's no longer in Grub because it's not using Grub. Grub's not even installed. Doesn't it just write to Dev Console? What I you want to enable serial consult logging of an is of Proxmox. Okay, yeah. Proxmox uses System D boot. If you want that, you're going to have to learn to to go modify the config file to modify okay. the, the kernel command line to cause the D message output to be on serial console. make a long story short they made it a pain in the butt well the, the, no it's not really a pain in the butt it's actually pretty easy to do the problem mm -hmm. is is it depends on which bootloader your linux distribution is using how you have to go about getting serial console working and whether you have to modify beyond the bootloader by adding a command line switch to cause it to use serial console but it what i mean is it's like change one or two or three little files and you only have to do it once and then the system is correctly configured yeah, and even if something gets, goes wrong yeah. it it gets, it, it gets trickier than that because if if you run an apt update and you haven't tweaked all the right places your command line gets splatted over the top of that's why i said you have to change more than one file instead of just the compiled drop config But yes, you can do it wrong, and then it gets undone on the first up get update, which updates the grub yeah. package. Been there, done that. The next time I read up on how to do it correctly, and then it worked. And it still works. So has anyone uh, beyond Mark Gilbert, a colleague of Andrew, used Webmin over the decades? Never even heard of it. 
Really? Oh, it was a classic from the 90s of a very Perl, very permissibly liced uh, web administration console that became quite popular with virtual hosting organizations and has been receiving a bunch of love from the um, uh, 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 one of the Linux appliance kind of repos. I forget the name, which one. And it but... became infamous for uh, all of its insecure defaults and uh, a, a single wow. tick here and there, and a big back tick here and there, and uh, in the last year or the last no, twenty-five in, years, in the early two thousands. Okay, fair enough. That's true of just about all the code out there. Uh, Andrew, you had something on Webman. I, I mean, I've seen it mostly, like in the nineties and two thousands. Um. Yeah, that's cool. just an answer to the question. Um, who had the CSM building question on Python? That's me. Tell us more. Um, so we basically don't have Python 2 anymore in Open Indiana. Me too, huh? Uh, and we fell over the problem that all of a sudden when we try to build a updated CSM uh, that required Python 2, which we don't have anymore. Um, or rather just as backup. Uh, we are building a Illumo specific fork of it, which is also something I was a little bit confused. Um, so my question basically is does anybody actually have a more a CSM that builds with something like GCC thirteen and Python three uh, somewhere? I don't think so. The last GCC time when the GCC version it was originally written for, I think it was four eight or something, was really 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 going away. Uh, the problem was what then was that then you compile the CSM code with uh, a new GCC, the binary gets a little bigger and that's too big and it no longer works because it doesn't fit into the place it has to fit in. I don't think space restrictions is a problem with the CSM. Like it was at the time that compiling with what was it, GCC 9 or 10 or something, uh, the binary a relevant part of a binary of the early startup code got too big and didn't fit in the fixed size for it, which is for some. So either you would have to change the code in compiler flex such that it still fits or re-architect basically yeah, okay. one more level of indirection in the startup code. A place you might go look for somebody building ED2K with newer tools, newer Python, would be to go to the to the Git and and look at for clones of it. Um, I know there's a ARM port of it um, that's fairly recent that I think is using GCC 13 to build ED2K itself, but they're not building a CSM because you don't have that on ARM. Um, yeah. Is it specifically in the CSM stuff that they're calling Python 2, or is it in the ED2K build? It's the build uh, of CSM. But does it, but all right, does the build without CSM use Python? Uh, we haven't checked that, but I think it also has some dependencies. Yeah, it's what I'm thinking is the whole, whole ED2K that has a dependency upon Python. And so if you find, like I'm saying, some of these newer projects, I'm sure have stumbled past this. Yep. I remember somebody from the FreeBSD group actually trying this, but I Rebecca think it was Rebecca. Cran would be the yeah. person with the FreeBSD project to talk about ED2K too. But I'm trying to think, I mean, oh, um, do, 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 do. Where do I even go? All right, just we'll go on, and I'm going to go do some Google. Okay, so I recall Corvin also bringing in um, a standard EDK to build. Uh, what was it? It's a four-letter acronym. Um, 
UEFI is a four-letter acronym. Yes, Definitely. I know. Yeah, there's a a <laughs> repo of EDK2 builds, and they're used by other hypervisors, and they don't have things like the Beehive VNC client co console, but, and I do see some mentions in this forum post um, from 21. Uh, Does anyone know what the EDK2 uh, point of view of the CSM is? Are they going to keep that in tree long term or are they looking to eject that code? Because Does anybody the rest of know it... a manager I could contact for that? Because that's also my question. Because a bunch of the problems that over time keep uh, with the Beehive boot code were specific to the CSM. So, so far it has always been fixed. It's su such a way that you can get it compiled and then use it, but the build steps aren't pretty, supposedly. Yeah. OVMF is the word I'm looking for, or acronym I'm looking for. Oh, the um, yeah, yeah. That's UFI. That's not CSM. Got Isn't it. that partly through ACPI, so that you can use ACPI to discover their subtree of the state? Uh, I think there was something on there, but. Uh, yeah, I need to look. Does anybody have contact to Rebecca and Corvin? They could I share have somehow. Messaged Rebecca and we'll hopefully get an answer back. She's pretty responsive. Maybe just uh, hit her up on Twitter. That's exactly what I did in parallel to this. Um, I see that they've moved some things around in this repo, but they do mention Beehive touched two months ago. Interesting. So I am in parallel, also just looking through this repo and it's like, okay, there's a beehive directory. Let's see what's in there. And I can do that on the share if you like. Uh, exclude the CSM based video. Oh, uh oh, um, CSS and remove CSM enable build. Okay, let's uh, take a look together. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the link you sent results in a 404 because there is no CSM directory. Right. But if you go up a bit, you'll see Beehive in there, and let's take a look what's going there. But the, there's mention uh, of CSM and removal. So, do, do, do. Um, starting right there, two months ago. Who and what? So there's Corvin, there's Rebecca, and I don't recognize these other folks. Ah. So, so that I think the Illumos uh, project still builds a completely different tree because we have a completely different upstream package that I was checking out. Do oh. you have the VNC console? Yes, okay. but only with UFI. Right, okay. same. What, yeah. Which source code, are, are you trying to build the stuff out of ports is where you're having? Uh, we have a GitHub link under the Lumos organization. Okay. I just went and looked, and it looks like to me that the primary ED2K repository has been upgraded for Python 3. Ah, I feared that it was our our fork that was... Your fork is probably too many... Is that your fork there at 22,000 commits behind? Um... Oh, this... <laughs> yeah, well, this... Would I'm just be, pulling this from that uh, link you provided. What's the component name? Oh. Uh, so 
the no three. that's 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 uh that's just the package description you have to have to oh. open the package description file just a second uh if I so this is opened indiana's ed2k yeah. work that you're having problems with yes exactly okay. this is not I've... a th this is a parts file for for, for what you uh think yeah. of the, this is not yeah. the source and and what the... version of ed2k is it dependent upon that's what I'm trying to find out, and I'll have it. I mean, for us, it would now I have be, it. That'll be in. That would be in the make directly in the make file. Would have a. Yeah, this one here. Um, have you looked at the you previous? A, I mean, it just pulls the latest version. Yeah, our code is the latest version, and we are we are ahead of FreeBSD. UFI because we are fork. <sighs> we are fork of the FreeBSD UF UA UFI ED2K repo. And I think we somehow have half the patches from Tyano Core that we that are upstream. Go up one level, I think. I want to see the Oh, from FreeBSD. Uh, okay. No, um, I want to see what the. I want to see the make file. You're down in the. That will we'll get you end. just to a Lumos, which might be a bit not helpful. Okay. Unless no, the I... make file's in this directory. Well, it's, no, I need oh. the make file above it that pulls this repository in that says which. Oh, well, uh, it will be a beast because ah. that seems to be a Lumos top level. Oh. No, the. the... You can't navigate GitHub like that. I posted the link. Okay, great. It's it. Ah, there you go. In. Thank you. Yeah, we have, I think, 4.9 or 4.4 with which we built this. different than all right uh dependencies are all the way down it's called required packages and yeah, illumos gcc was... is gcc for that wasn't nine. what i was looking for is what i was looking for is what version of ed2k are you pulling out of the edk2 git repository because you'll probably specify a version in there and you're probably we have a custom branch You check That's out the component point tag. of uh, divergence. The link I sent before. So you're using a 2014 version? It's, so the component yeah. tag is IL UD 2014. Well, no wonder you're dependent on Python 2.7 and. and old gcc you need to track newer newer ed2k uh what's a component I tag don't one think with the that's 2000 the current uh, one. component tag one is 2023 you are pulling newer code so okay <laughs> it's not too old which Maybe means that i would think if you're pulling that why you're de declaring your dependency still to be on python 2.7 I think we're just copying something wrong from OmniOS either, or somehow the I'm as well confused. Okay, you because might I see, try. You might I see try, a couple modern ones. You might try rebuilding it with that runtime updated to Python three nine and just see what it does. Uh, mm -hmm. It breaks. We know that the the the, the, the contributor to tried that through two two three. To do the most basic automatic uh, rewriting? Uh, we haven't checked that because we don't want to modify the sources, actually. We want to keep as much uh, upstream as possible. Yeah, but yeah. I think, however, 
we have a more modern tag available that I could try from the Illumos already. Because there is a tag for 2308. So, so I'm a bit confused about the tag. Just ah, curiosity. Component Does tag it... one twenty three oh eight still uses Python two seven. So we so our version has Python two seven and upstream has Python three. Okay. That's my suspicion. Are you guy? Are you building upstream, or do you have a fork? I I'm building on all sorts of platforms, so I build Tianacore all over the place. So I In, I build it from get ED two K, including Tiana. CSM. Uh, on one platform, I believe okay. so. Okay. Okay. Just for resulting a blob uh, boot in Beehive. No. It boots on real hardware. Okay. I'm I'm building Tianacore for real hardware. Ah. I know. <laughs> yeah, we're we're looking you for something that boots in Beehive. Different well, that, that, but what I'm saying is if you are on a modern version of EDK2, you should be on modern Python and modern compilers. Yeah. And the only reason that either something's happened in your update process or I don't see even how you're building a, a 2030 or 2023 version of piano core with python 2 and gcc4 but yeah i'm in that case i'm more looking if somebody from the freebsd people built something upstream that boots in beehive because then i can try to start our process based on that rather than what we have in Illumos or figure out what actual patches we have. Rebecca, Rebecca Cran built the latest versions of that and in, included a CSM version of it that is in the ports tree. Okay. And looking at the getting started documentation for ED2K, uh, well, it has only been updated uh, in 2022. Uh, it still references Python 3.7, so I wouldn't call that uh, the latest Python. No, but it's obviously time. was updated to 3.x two years ago, right? Yes. So that tells me that whatever Open Indiana is building and whatever Illuminos is building is really old stuff. Yeah, but once you start forking it, it, it kind of becomes hard to go go by just version numbers. Yeah, that's the FreeBSD port for the CSM. Yeah. And it has all the downsides I mentioned in chat, but it works. But it will go away with GCC 4.8. Well, what about Python? Is it, you know, two. its dependencies? Is it yeah, it's or... documented in there in the port. You can see that it has a build dependency on Python 2.7. Oh, uh, there's a 3.9. Let's see. Yeah, that you know, the build is that's the people watching. That's just random correlations. Okay, thank you. I'm just trying to help. If you go down uh, or if you look at the pod sources for the make file, it specifies that Python two seven is a build yeah. dependency because it will result as a little firmware blob. It doesn't have any runtime dependencies. Hmm. It also okay. depends on nothing. Uh, for the assembler code, bash, yeah. I yeah, the CS the CSM version for FreeBSD is probably still really old. It is. Because building a working CSM for um modern sources has had multiple people bounce off the code and the interface. The because code has the to... CSM implementation itself was done from scratch by Peter and and um, what's his name? Uh, Tico. Tico, and it's not very. It's not maintained. There's nobody working on that code. Nobody here. Nobody around that knows how to write BIOS codes. The problem. 
And so you've so, got this really old crappy chunk of code that nobody's maintaining and nobody wants to try and pull it forward to new tools. Yeah, it's the CSM maybe, stuff itself. Given the how minimal the interface specific to Beehive is compared to the um, complexity of real, real hardware and the variation between real hardware systems, maybe it would be easier to port something like CBIOS to Beehive. Then that came up recently. That would be an outstanding idea. And I think it's there is been, some code in It's been suggested many there. times, but nobody has taken on that task. Uh, I'll reach out to Yakub. Apparently, he had it for FreeNAS 10. Yeah, somebody had it working somewhere, kind of, sort of. Yakub at IX for... Freenas 10 Corral, they yeah. thought this is a great easy button, you know, licensing aside, rock and roll. Yeah, licensing isn't an issue because it all lives out in ports. Yep, 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 yep. And no, it yeah, was probably an issue for True NAS to put it in. No, it can't, it can't be. No, they, they've not been too worried about it that. now. So, <laughs> yeah, they're not, never been super worried about that. I'll I, reach out to them. I'll, right. I'll reach out. <laughs> So the CBIOS port for FreeBSD is for Zen mostly, or for maybe real hardware. It's for and, Zen specifically. Yeah, not all of the real hardware stuff has been disabled, so it may even boot on something real when you write it to the right EEPROM. <laughs> but, I, I, very, I very much doubt it because it doesn't have any memory initialization code. So it won't- That's done through the hard. security processes on modern enough systems. Um, at least mostly the memory training. Intel management engines or AMD, PSP, handle the memory controller with DRAM and caches already enabled, if I remember correctly. So Rebecca responded the CSM code has been removed. Yeah, so they removed it because. Oh, people are wanted. not going to be happy about that. But realistically speaking, I haven't used the code to boot anything in like four years other than test systems. You're not the whole world. I know. <laughs> the question is, is it still worth to preserve this capability and port something new? I know that I'm not the benchmark. But at the same point... Just last week, we had Chuck in here asking about trying to boot BIOS code. So yeah, it's relevant. And Chuck isn't working in a little piece of something. It's some enterprise type solution for something. Mm -hmm. well, about oh, yes, it's still relevant. I don't even know why we have these discussions about this anymore. Developers are far too detached from the real world. I'm for preserving it. The question is how much effort is this worth if you have to pick your battles? Oh, that's always a question, but have we found any motivated or vaguely possibly motivated parties beyond Rebecca and Corvin who have their names on there signing off to have it go away? So, uh, I believe Chuck is motivated. I understand. And I've we spent, kindly invited we, him to join the call. We, we spent a few cycles after the meeting last week trying to figure out, not last week, two weeks ago, I think it was, trying to figure out what the pieces were to get CBIOS running in Beehive just to even output a console message. Hmm. So, so that's how we motivated have a package? he is. He's trying to compile it and make it work already inside of Beehive. <laughs> Got it. That would be very nice. And at this point, I think he's reached out to John, and I don't know where he is with any of it. So oh, it was half then has the C BIOS package that is at least within reach, but is doing the bare minimum work to get that off Hello? the ground. Okay, go ahead, Test Jason. Um so if you have a binary of the CSM code uh or that blob, you could technically skip more modern rebuilds and simply just ship that binary. Sure, package abandonware. 
Uh, over. Yeah, until it's fixed. Um, I'm more. It's more like well, an interim solution, but. The f problem is when anything changes in the hive and it requires a, even if it's unintentional, uh, you can never fix that blob. If the build tool chain has been effectively lost and the code isn't understood by anyone to maintain it, you now have to maintain feature and bug compatibility to that code in the hypervisor. Yeah, I don't I think that's something you want to commit to. Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, probably easiest just to find a, a system that has Python 2.7. Okay. Can you but... just run a, a, a Linux zone or something like that? I mean, is it that hard to port the Python 2.7 code to Python 3.9? It's just Python. Come on. Can you, can't you just Possible. download Python 2.7 and build it? <laughs> A yeah, plug? we probably still have a binary package around somewhere. We can just keep that. Uh, yeah, we, we were trying to remove it, and we are trying to remove everything from Python 2.7, but if, if this is the last consumer, we can keep it until it's uh, until CSM is switching to CBIOS. At I least guess. it's only a build dependency. Yeah. The... I don't. I don't know that CSM will switch to CBIOS, or there will be a separate loadable BIOS. You don't even use EFI if you're going to. If you need BIOS boot, just load CBIOS, just like Zen does. You don't need. You don't need any of the EFI stuff if your intention is it, to run a BIOS-based operating system. Oh yeah, no, no. That's uh, the point for me, more is Like, ah, uh, okay, we just built CBIOS and UFI from two separate repositories right. yes. and, and do the thing. Because for we just pull upstream components, uh, UFI removes CSM, we build CBIOS instead, and everybody's happy. And I quickly grabbed through the CBIOS code the first time it came up. They do have uh, defines around ZIO and NVMe. So someone has implemented yes, this. Those are, those are known to operate. So that works in other hypervisors already. So you don't have to implement the BIOS it drivers for ZIO uh, or NVMe. Till what my operating system are you talking about? Features for IO and NVMe work in both QEMU and Zen. So at least VIDIO console, VIDIO net, VIDIO block work. I haven't looked for VIDIO SCSI. Uh, Till, can you share your target operating systems? Having a use case always helps. Uh, for the host or for the guest? Uh, booting a guest that depends on CSM or CBIOS or something like it. Uh, no clue. I actually don't want to. Uh, I'm the maintainer of Open Indiana, so we package CSM, so ah, we have okay. to keep patch packaging it because otherwise, if we kick out CSM, we have the same problem as somebody coming down the pipe and saying like, "I need CSM." Well, okay, but we haven't identified those people yet beyond Chuck and those covering. Well, we can always try speaking. our trick for just removing it and then finding out. It has worked thus far. The screen test. Uh, <laughs> related, Have did you ever receive one of the ports of Grub, be it uh, uh, Chuck's update that solves quite a few problems of the original hacky Grub 2 port? Uh, no, we have loader. Okay. We have no grub at all. You don't have grub loader for beehive? Grub, what is it? Yeah, grub, grub to beehive? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Oh, let's see. Is that a separate repo or some? It could be port. a package. It's just a user space port of it. For loading such things. 
It's it's a it's a fork of Linux's Grub to by Chalk, specifically tweaked to work with Beehive. I think originally by Peter and Chuck gave it some much needed love yes. a year yeah, or two yeah, ago. Yeah, Grub Two was originally by Peter. You're right. And it basically loads Grub inside Beehive as the boot code, or as a boot mm -hmm. step, and then it, or a load it, step. It runs, as if I recall correctly, it runs on the host, and does the Grub Two booting to build the kernel image in the beehive memory space and then starts the beehive vm yes uh, and that's why yeah. it's so damn dangerous to run because it uses the grub file system drivers and binary exit repassers and so on on the guest files uh, block devices and their contained partition tables and file systems it's root without any form of sandboxing Right now, there's some ongoing work to at least add um, the open ad and so on and capsicumization or to Beehive load, but that's happening right now. So grab Beehive and be Beehive load will just run as root, running the boot drivers and file system implementations against the disk content of the guest. So good. Uh, yeah, it's just find the exploit of your choice. Yeah, that's probably the person somebody... is already root to be able to execute any of this. So no, no need for an exploit. And they're in a zone. They're yeah. root in a guest, and the the reboot, and the next time the bootloader runs as root on the host. So you intentionally corrupt your file system in a way to exploit the bootloader file system code. And when you reboot that, you get code execution as root on the host. Which might have been a reason why we didn't get it. It was a useful shortcut before we had proper bootworm support. It did, I totally understand why Beehive Load was written the way it is because it really saved a lot of time getting Beehive up and running to run FreeBSD on FreeBSD uh, during the early development. Grab Beehive, in my opinion, shouldn't have happened that way. It should have at least jailed itself, uh, but it didn't. And it didn't drop, drop permissions and so on. It stayed as root, at least when I still used it. Welcome, Chris. Yo, how you doing, guys? We're good. We're talking uh, other bootloaders for legacy systems, be it um, CSM, which is looking like it's out the door, out of the going away, and then uh, CBIOS, which may have briefly supported Beehive. That said, do you happen to be a UEFI or CBIOS hacker? Oh my God, no. User, <laughs> yes, but hacker, unfortunately, no. Understood. Anything else on the loader topic? Because uh, I'll reach out to the folks I can. I'd be curious if there's such a thing as a freelance CBIOS developer who at least knows the code and could bring it to life over here. And at one time, me and Peter were having conversations about some net BSD test code that were basically standalone CPU binaries. And I think he was posting some stuff. I think he posted the stuff to one of the mailing lists where he had it working, where he could he could run these arbitrary little teeny binaries in in Beehive. And it it would be really nice to find that work. So basically a minimal boot ROM, which is only a hello there world. Was, there was there was no boot ROM. Or anything like that. It worked just like Beehive Load did, and basically 
you ended up taking this compiled binary and putting it in Beehive memory and firing Beehive off and it would run it. If you don't look at the binary content, that's not much of a risk. Just bl basically blitting the bits over to Beehive guest memory. Yeah, but it, it, the whole interaction has to be done correctly so that the Beehive will actually fire up and run your code. It has to be linked to exactly. the proper location and loaded at the proper locations in order for it to work. And Peter had done all of those pieces and nice. had it working. It would be nice to find that work again because it would be very, very useful to at least chop to get CBIOS working. Because right now we can't get CBIOS to, to do anything, apparently do anything. Do you recall any other keywords for that? I'm doing some searches here. Uh, no, I've arbitrary I've, I've tried all sorts of search food to try and find it and have yeah. it. Mike, you mentioned that there may have been some uh, CBIOS port to Beehive for um, Freenas Twinners. Uh, Freenas okay. 10 Corel had Yakub, I believe, port in CBIOS and I Right. Going down that road, that repo may them? still be out there as an archived repo. I forget if they're on GitHub at that point or still on SourceForge. Have you have you seen this uh, this conversation? I think it was this one. Hold on a second. Maybe I'm posting the wrong link here. Where you have this guy? Uh, well, the, the, this guy basically said that um, he did some work on. Uh, on an emulated video card that you would require for B, uh, for CBIOS to be actually able to run with, with Beehive. I'm not sure whether that is actually right or wrong, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've recently talked with him. That's um... All right, okay, got it. If I remember correctly, at least on real hardware, I've seen oh, no, CBIOS running on systems without yeah, a VGA that, that, output. Yeah, that was in response to Chuck asking stuff about. Yeah. Um... Yeah, that's where Chuck asked on the mailing list about this. And that this guy responded that he had this. But that his what what Henrik says there is the problem is is that you need an emulated video card. Well, CBIOS now has that in it. And I don't think it had it back in 2019 when he was working with it. There is now a video VGA um chunk of code in in cbios and my understanding is is beehive already has the hardware hooks in it for bga i octals or uh, io the program the programmed io and the memory map is an accessible video thing that you can get to so um Yeah, if anyone feels adventurous, we can try to um, see if that patch still works. Probably not. Chris, you're pretty staticky. You always seem to have some kind of cool audio <laughs> issue. But <Yes. laughs> if you do have news on your project, do let us know about your VM state D. Not much says Tuesday, unfortunately. No worries. Well, I'll reach out to the various folks and I'll try to find that repo once again. Corral was out there and here's maybe an archived repo and there's a... So you think that was part of TrueNAS 10 Corral? Yes, from Yakub, who has been mighty quiet lately. He's the one who brought his 9P server up to date and integrated a few years back. Well, let me see. Green Oh, this sounds nice and old. Let's see. See, see BIOS.
IO cage ports, not helpful. Let's see. Hmm. Alrighty. Um, I don't have an answer off the top of my head, but it seems this issue will never, ever, ever go away, which is just fine because those platforms will probably never, ever go away. So. Other topics. Any other news, Chris? As you read Not at the moment. Go. Oh. Dan, anything from your corner of the world? No, nothing over here. Well, I'm happy to call it if we have expressed our desires regarding these topics. Um, there is some homework to be done by perhaps all of us in some way. So, uh, if you don't have something else, I'm going to call it at like 10.53 after Pacific. It's up to you. It's your call. Bye. Have a good afternoon or whatever your time zone is. Thank you so much and like and subscribe.